It's the PHNX Coyotes podcast brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download today using code PHNX and place a $1 football bet and get $200 in free bets. It's just that easy. Well, we're here at our second ever... We made it to day two. ever episode of the PHNX Coyotes podcast. And for those that watched episode one, please notice Craig is wearing a hat today <laughs> because I received better... Ver- Several Twitter comments, texts, emails. What's going on with Craig's hair? Yeah, long, I got some wig long questions. Hair, long hair. Long hair, Craig, wig. Yeah. Just wig. throw it out there. Wow. <laughs> I did. I, I did get one wig coming. See, now I'm going to have to get some wigs to I'm wear. I'm just checking. I might have to do this. Which is fine. Yeah, my hair got a bit unruly during COVID. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to probably chop it off soon. But yeah, I just want to get it out of the way. I thought your hair looked great, Craig. So we we'll got see. it out of the way. But anyway. Um, so well, <laughs> hey, Petey, can you remove your feet from the I table know. too? So They said be comfortable. So I'm trying to be comfortable. Yep, yeah, comfortable, but you know, you still got to follow the quorum here. This is uh, I will wouldn't fly in my house. Well, speaking of the table, you may notice we have our some new Coyotes bobbleheads today. We also included a Steve Nash. Yesterday we were um, reprimanded for not cleaning our table, so <laughs> the hockey figurine stayed on for the Sun Show, as a yeah. viewer pointed out. So as an apology, we included a Suns figure. Um, and we thought of Steve Nash because, you know, Canadian. As close as you can Makes get sense. to a hockey yeah, player. Yeah, exactly. So shout out, shout out the Sun Show. Point. Right, you probably Practiced heard there all, all those stories how he hung yeah. out in the Coyotes locker room when they shared an arena way yeah. back in the day. Actually can skate, Canadian guy. Yep, yep. It's appropriate. Yeah. And uh, by the way, I noticed that the Suns folks did not clean up the table today they, either. So. <laughs> they did not. So it is yeah, on Suns Again, podcast. day two, I don't know if there's a, 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 do we have a procedure yet? Do we know? I, I don't know. We We'll work on it. I'm just thinking when I see the Suns thing next time, I'm just going to take a stick I and <laughs> clear off the table, see what happens. All right. Well, we've got an awesome show today. We actually have an interview on tap for today, which we're all very excited about. Um, and Craig just tweeted out the link to his article he wrote today on Liam Kirk. And that is going to be our guest on our show today. So we're super excited about that. Um, for those of you who don't know, Liam Kirk is a Coyotes prospect. Um, and he's here for the development camp. And anything else you want to say before we bring <laughs> him in? And he's British. <laughs> and he's British. And he's yeah. here on our show. <laughs> which is a which is a rarity. And that's that's a, really the tenor of the story today. Is I mean, he's kind of. I don't want to put all of this on Liam that he's carrying the hopes of UK hockey, but he has a lot of eyes on him because there just haven't been a lot of players to make it this far from the UK. There there have been some guys with backgrounds like I think Kenny Hodge was actually born there, but moved to Canada when he was really young. Brendan Perlini, Brendan Perlini the Coyotes, but he moved to Canada when he was 11. He still wants to be considered British, but yeah. they're not completely owning him. So that, that's a different discussion. But Liam is born and bred and, and trained, and learned everything about hockey in the UK. And he's an incredible story, a seventh round draft pick. He lit up Peterborough in his second season. He just keeps sort of Beating the odds and beating the critics—it's a—it's a fun story to cover. And and not only that too. When you when you talked about a seventh round draft pick and you, you talk about him being from the UK, it's you know it's similar to what you heard with Josh Stone. Is it is it a gimmick? Is it a marketing tool? Is it something for PR to put out? Truth is, the kid can play. Um, he was a you know he really hit the the worldwide scene in the World Championships this year. If you haven't seen him play in the World Championships, Google it and go on YouTube and mm. watch his highlights from the World Championships. Kid can score. He's got a he's got a nose for the net. He's an exciting player to watch. Um, I think this is going to be he's going to be one of the key players on the Coyotes roster to watch next weekend uh, at the development uh, tournament. Um, so we're excited to have him with us today. All right, and that being said, let's let's bring him in. He's on. Hey, right. Liam. Hi, What's Liam. up, Liam? <laughs> How's it going? Great. How are you? Where are you right now? Uh, I'm just I'm just at the hotel room right now. We had a we had a little break in our, in our schedule today, so I, I ran back just to just to get a little break from the rink for a minute. How how has the schedule been uh, for for this camp? Uh, they keeping you busy? Yeah, really busy. It's been pretty much nonstop the past past couple of days. Um, you know, we had all the medicals and stuff uh, yesterday morning, and then a skate, and uh, you know we had a skate this morning as well. So we got a workout this afternoon. So uh, this is the first little little break in the day I've got. So. Liam, how are you feeling? Uh, you had mentioned that you 
you had about a month there where you couldn't play and you're trying to round yourself back into shape. I, I know you were working with your trainer, Danny Maurer, uh, Maurer, and you're trying to do some other things to stay in shape, but how are you feeling after a, a few days of informal skates and now a couple of days of prospect development camp? Yeah, I definitely feel a lot better today than I did yesterday. I think um, you know, the, the, the practices were intense and uh, obviously a few people know that I got stuck in, in the Dominican for a while, sort of a visa and stuff like that. So there wasn't any ice, obviously. And, uh, the gym at the hotel wasn't much, you know, you couldn't do too much there. So uh, it was a little, little shock on the system, but um, no, I'm feeling good and you know, having fun at the same time. So. We have to ask a follow-up question to that. You were stuck in the Dominican. So can you explain the circumstances behind that? Was this a vacation or something else going on? And, and clearly they don't have a lot of hockey in the Dominican. Yeah, so uh, no, it was um, uh, basically I needed a work visa and uh, the earliest appointment in England was March the 8th. So obviously, you know, it's not going to work with the season starting in October and camp starting in September. So, uh, you know, we looked at a few different options in, in Dominican. Was, um, you know, they, they had lots of appointments and interviews available. So, um, you know, it just kind of worked out that we go there. But I kind of got stuck with the, the process of my passport or whatnot. It took a little longer than expected. But How long were you there? Now, so that's all that matters. Uh, I think it was roughly just under three weeks. Wow. Yeah, just under three. Oh, my gosh. What did you do while time. you were there? Yeah, how do you fill your time? <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of, you know, uh, walked around a little bit uh, around the city, um, went by the pool, obviously, and, and tried to get a little tan. I'm usually very, very white, so uh, I had to get a little bit of color before I came here. <laughs> Liam, it's been, it's been a year and a half now since you've had a real full season and played like a regular winter schedule. Do you prepare differently in the summer? Is it is it more of a, a physical detriment or is it more mental? Like, how are you approaching this season? Yeah, it's definitely weird. I think like last summer, you know, we were working out with almost seemed like you were working out for no end goal, right? You didn't know when you were going to play, when, when the season was going to start. So it was a little different. Whereas uh, this summer, you know, I, I knew that I would uh, be in Arizona from you know, September time, ready for a camp. And uh, so you kind of have a goal to focus towards and um, you know a lot of aims to meet so you know, my trainer Danny you know he's been awesome with me and uh, he puts a lot of us through our paces and um, you know he, he has workouts that um, you know we take information from from the coyotes and their, their workout team and um, you know we implement it into ours and you know just to get me in the best shape possible and you know so far uh, through testing and stuff I've, I've been help, holding my own so and follow up with that you talk about being in the valley and being Arizona you know I, I did some research on you today and Going back home and into the UK, the weather is much different there than it is here. Like we see the sun every day, the heat affects you. Do you train differently? Is it affecting your body differently? Especially for a camp like this, where you're in the gym and you're on the ice and they run you pretty hard. Have you noticed the weather? Has it been a problem? Oh, uh, well, I mean, luckily for, for, for the camp, we're indoors, right? So you got the AC, but uh, no, when we were exiles the first couple of weeks when I got here, I definitely you know the first the first um, day of working out we, we did some stuff outdoors and, you know I could could tell there's a difference your know, body feels a lot more fatigued quicker and uh, you know you have to take on a lot more water so you know uh, it's just kind of important thing for, for us as athletes right you sweat so much so just to stay hydrated and you know, drink plenty that's definitely been a big emphasis. Liam, I don't want to dwell on this. I, I've asked you about it enough already, and that was the subject of my story today. But just for our listeners here, could you talk about just having a lot of eyes back home on you, um, sort of hoping for your success, hoping that it can lead to bigger things for the UK, sort of carrying the hopes of a nation on your shoulders? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I... I try not to see it as that, you know, like I said, I've said many times before, I'm just a kid from Mulberry, right, that just plays hockey and, you know, uh, kind of living his dream the best he can and, and working towards that end goal of playing in the NHL. So, you know, I, I understand that there's, um, you know, I guess some pressure and, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of eyes on me to, to have some success, but you know, I kind of, kind of not focus on that and just do, do my thing, right? Like, that's where I've got my success so far, it's just um, by concentrating on myself and my game and making sure that, uh, you know, when I'm on the ice, I'm in the gym and I'm working towards that goal that, you know, all my attention and focus on that. You revealed yesterday that you're a Chelsea fan, so we got to dive into that origin story a little bit. How did that come about and have, have you attended a lot of matches? No, I, I, I say, say Chelsea fan. I won't call myself a fan. Like, I like the team. Um, you know, I've never been 
I too much into football. I just, you know, follow the, follow England when they play and the, and the Euros and World Cup and stuff. But I remember younger, I, I used to like watching Didier Drogba when he was uh, mm. at Chelsea. I watched him on TV. I never never went to a game for my dad. But, um, you know, he made me a promise. I wish I knew that we get to one, so he still kind of needs to, to pay off on that promise and get me to a Chelsea match. But, um, yeah, I think Didier Drogba was just, um, yeah, it was cool to watch him play. Is that blasphemy to say that you're not that much into football in, in the UK? <laughs> I guess, but I'm, you know, I've always been the different one, right? Playing off here in England, so. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Liam, when, when we talk to our fans here, you know, our Coyote fans, we've got Roadrunner fans here, and what can they expect from Liam Kirk? What, what kind of player are you? Is there someone in the league that's playing now that you kind of emulate your game towards? Um, you know, kind of give them an idea of what to expect going into next week's tournament. Yeah, I mean, I think the way I play, I like to, you know, create offense and being around the net. Uh, you know, one of my skills is that I, can, I can read the game uh, pretty well and, and get into areas where I can get scoring chances. Um, you know, that's one of my keys. But you know, I've tried to, learn, to, to do a lot of work on uh, just becoming more of an all-round player. And you know, obviously, to get to NHL, um, you know, it's a big step, and you have to be good at everything. So. Um, yeah, like I said, but you know, my keys uh, have definitely been my offensive side and being able to, to skate well and use my speed and, and create offense. But yeah, I, I wouldn't say that defines me <laughs> for sure. I got to ask about your uh, sibling rivalry with your brother Jonathan. Um, he insists that he never forced you to stand in front of the net. That's just sort of the way that it evolved. You were the quasi goaltender, I guess, or uh, at, at earlier age, uh, just they parked you in front of the net and let you whack away at pucks. But how much of that is truth and how much of that is is your brother's spin on things? No, I mean, when I was when I first started playing hockey, I started playing roller. Uh, and I remember um, Sarah, she was the coach at the time. She, uh, she cuts my hair when I'm back home. Um, she, um, she, I remember when I was younger, just used to tell me, go and stand in front of the net. There's no offside rule uh, in roller hockey. So I used to stand around there and wait to get the pass and just try and put it in. But, you know, as you only talk, just whacking away there. But... No, JK has been a role model to me, uh, you know, my whole life, and uh, and we grew up obviously, um, you know, playing hockey at different age groups. So it was you know, good to be able to look up to him and see see how he's doing and the path that he went uh, uh, and learn from you know mistakes as well uh, along the way. So and we spent a lot of time in our back garden shooting at each other. We kind of had uh, we had one net. Uh, and then we had like a wall and we just put like cones at each side and usually I'd be in the net uh, so we had a bigger target but uh, and it usually ended up in a fight as well at the end we'd have a little scrap for five minutes just to <laughs> just to annoy my mum and dad but no he did mention a, that too uh, yeah <laughs> yeah we had a lot of rivalries um growing up and, and we, we we got a lot closer as we got older so uh, no he's definitely been a big role model can you tell me about the time when you guys ruined your skates trying to skate on snow on the street he mentioned that one too. <laughs> yeah, it just kind of snowed a little in England, but it was um, ice over a little bit in some places. And I remember we saw a video of uh, someone skating along ice um, on a road. I don't know if it was England or not, probably not, but uh, and obviously there's a little bit of ice. And we got excited, so we tried it, and it was sparks. <laughs> there's like a oh little bit gosh. of ice, and then the rest was just sparks, <laughs> just hitting straight concrete. So. Yeah, I don't think I'm and dad were too pleased that we come back and we were like, our skates are pretty, pretty done. Did <laughs> yeah. you actually have to get new skates? Uh, I don't think we got new skates, but we got new steels. I, I, I was yeah. always uh, in, in my brother's hand-me-down kit. Or, well, I say that up until I got to like 12, 13, and then I outgrew him. But um, uh, I, my dad kept me in my kit for as long as he could. So my toes are in a bad way because of it. Um, Liam, I'm wondering, you know, you just mentioned that you're odd for playing hockey in England. How did that even begin? I, I don't even know that backstory of how you got into playing hockey growing up in England. Yeah, so my, the Steelers, they, they, they became the team in Sheffield. Uh, it was a Super League back then. And, uh, my mom and dad, they, they, they went and got tickets uh, from work and uh, they went to the games and they kind of fell in love with the sport and love with the Steelers and uh, obviously they had my brother first and they kept taking him to games and you know, he fell in love with the sport and played hockey so you know, like I said as a younger brother you always look up to, 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 to your older brothers and role models so he was put into I wanted to play and I just kind of fell in love with it from there. All right bud 
I know you have uh, other appointments today. You probably have to get to something, I think, at 2.30 today. So th thanks for taking time out of what is a very busy day to join us, and I'm sure we'll see you out there at, at, at camp sometime soon. Yeah, thanks, Liam. We look forward to see you next week. Lawrence, appreciate it. Thank you. Wow. How about that, Craig? Our first interview. Like, I, I don't know, Day Shane. Two. Shane, is that the first live interview at PHNX that you know of? Oh. 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 oh, they had an in-person interview on the ASU show. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, but, but this was our first like, call. This in. is techie yeah. stuff. This is good stuff. Day two. Yeah. You already really had one, you. Shane, a call in, like a live, like a techie call in or the yeah. walk in. No, it was a in person. Yeah, well, I saw that. it. Doesn't count. I mean, no. it counts as an interview, but this, <laughs> like the techie thing. No, I thought it was awesome. No, it was. Good it job, was. Craig. Had to go, yeah. Shane. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and this, I mean, this ties in with prospect development camp, obviously. Uh, we talked a little bit about this, but there are some interesting prospects to watch at this camp. I don't, you guys want to dive into this a little bit, Petey? I know you've got some thoughts do, on a few of these players. I do want to dive into that. But first, I just want to mention that um, on Monday, their, the development camp will culminate in a black versus white scrimmage. I believe it's at 6 p.m. Um, and, you know, we just talked to Shane behind the camera. If you don't know, Shane is the co-host of our Bets show, our PHNX Bets show. Um, so, Shane, who do you have in the black and white oh. scrimmage on Monday <laughs> yeah, night yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the Coyotes development camp? <laughs> Uh, I don't really have one, but um, I got I got at least a fight happening. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. Well, we'll keep yeah. an eye old on that. school camp here. I like it. Yeah. Trying to impress. Well, okay. I don't know if there'll be any lines for that game on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, but there's plenty more on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Um, the DraftKings DraftKings Sportsbook is the official betting partner of the NFL, um, and it's live in Arizona with mobile sports betting just in time for football, which started last night and continues this weekend. Super excited about that. DraftKings is giving all new customers a can't miss offer to celebrate the return of the NFL season. If you bet just $1 on any football game this weekend, you receive a $200 free bet instantly, no matter what. DraftKings is safe, reliable, and secure, making it easy for you to deposit and withdraw your money at your convenience. I actually did my first bet yesterday, so excited about that one. Um, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code PHNX to receive $200 in free bets when you place a $1 bet on any week one game. That's promo code PHNX for a free $200 bet instantly this week at DraftKings Sportsbook, official sports betting partner of the NFL, 21 and over, Arizona only, gambling problem, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, eligibility restrictions apply, maximum $50 wager, one per customer, street DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. So. That was a mouthful. I gotta give it up for you on the reads, I man. I, I I could not you do know, that. I'd I really be fumbling took all pride over myself. in elementary school being the one to not mess up when they called <laughs> on you in class. Like that, I used to get so mad when people would <laughs> mess up. Yeah, so I'd mess up. Um, It'd and, be a disaster. And like I mentioned um, at the beginning of the interview, Craig did publish um, a profile today on Liam Kirk, so you can find that on our website, gophnx.com. Um, if you're not a member. You should definitely subscribe. If you sign up for a year membership, you get a free T-shirt. And I believe the Coyotes shirt is still Ooh, in the lead. Selling like yeah. hotcakes. Um, and I believe that the Suns show, they mentioned that they are go having a little inter... We just oh, have no. a rivalry with that show yeah, for some I saw reason. that. The but PHNX Yeah, they're, they're trying throwback. to plug... Their, I mean, the, the Suns shirt is amazing. It's cool. It's cool throwback PHNX. Mm -hmm. it, it is awesome. But they haven't sold as many as the Coyotes. But they have not sold yeah. as many as the Coyotes. So we, that should, for future shows and something to throw out to the fans, we need to name the, our little mascot our little, our little dog, carrier. Or, yeah. Or a little coyote. The mascot dog. from our, our logo yeah. for the podcast. Okay. We should okay. start thinking should of probably names. probably have a scoreboard to, behind us, too. You know, Suns yeah. versus Coyotes. Yeah, and, we can do that. Wow. We'll, we'll, make yeah. a, we'll make a graphic for it. Cause right up until we start getting on <laughs> wins for the season. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> there's no competition there. But uh, anyway, becoming a member not only gets you access to all of our written content, it also gets you exclusive members-only deals on our merchandise every week. As we mentioned, you can check it out at phnxlocker.com. You get access to our members-only Discord, which, if you're already in there, it has been popping off. Um, since yesterday mm -hmm. and and if you love what you're doing here and you want to support us become a member of the family today and like i mentioned you'll get a t-shirt of your choice or um, if you just want to try us for a month it's just 50 cents to try the first month so tons of great content on the website not just from us here at coyotes but all the other sports as well so be sure to check that out 
Fantastic. And we talk about we were talking about the development camp. So we we're looking at what's happening there in the first couple of days. They skated yesterday. They have a skate today, and really, what the goal of the coaching staff and management in these first two days is just getting guys comfortable back on the ice. And I know you'll say, well, a lot of these guys have been skating all summer. It's just different. Mm-hmm. Like they're skating, you know, you're full full speed now. You're bringing in contact. So it's going to be just getting everybody acclimated. To, to real time, real speed practices right now. So I think that's what their goal is right now. I don't think they're getting into, you know, systems or who's playing with who, or they're really not evaluating at this point, other than how hard they're working. That's getting noticed. Trust me, everybody notices how hard players are working. So that's what the takeaway is from the coaching and management side. From the player side, there's a lot of nerves, especially guys that have been here the first time. Like there's a lot to take in, right up to the equipment. You got new equipment, you don't feel quite right, and you're staying in a different hotel. It's, it takes a few days. So by the time we get to that black and white game on Monday, now guys have kind of settled in. This is who they are. They kind of get comfortable with their surroundings. And I think that's gonna be a true picture of, of um, what kind of players are here at this camp. Um, We'll do a deep dive next week of the tournament and all the players that are here. One of the things, you know, you look at an Anaheim. they got Zegris and Drysdale coming in, guys that have played in the league. Guys that are going to play in the league this season. I don't think the Coyotes are looking at this development camp as a preview of any players playing in the National Hockey League this year. I just don't. Yeah. There may be one exception yeah, that we'll probably, probably talk about yeah. as we pull up some of these players. I think this is more of let's see what we have versus let's see what we have ready for opening night. Yeah. There'll be one exception. We'll go through some of these players here. And Who do you want to start with, Leah? Um, let's start with, well, why don't we just start with Liam Kirk? We okay. just had him on our show. Let's start with Liam. Oh, and you know what I didn't mention on when he was on, but we should show this right now. We have an amazing photo of Liam at age five, <laughs> um, as you can see. This is his screen. first yeah, goal just... of his life. It's, it's pretty awesome. I think he was six. I think I had this in the story. He was six years old at the time. He was in a tournament, and he, uh, he just got a backdoor pass and put it over the goalie's pads. The celebration that you see there, if you look at the photo at the top of my story of him at the World Championship, it's the exact same oh, celebration. So awesome. it's really cool that he's kept that his entire life. That's awesome. Well, yeah, why don't we start with Liam Curry? You know what? He, he's a guy that everybody can root for. Um, he works incredibly hard, and he's a guy you get drafted in the seventh round to get to a development camp from a seventh round pick and play in the world championships and accomplish some of the things he has already accomplishment accomplished excuse me is a big step um he's well liked he's a good kid he prepares the right way he's a goal scorer skilled kid um do i see him starting the season at the coyotes no do i see him playing with the roadrunners yeah I, i think he is i think he's a guy that is going to develop and that staff down there with Pot Van Slaney and Jay Verde, that's what they do. They develop, they listen, they teach. Um, I think Liam's going to be a big part of what they're doing down there. I really do. Now, do I expect him, you know, is he going to be a superstar in the American League right away? I, I don't know. But he's going to be a guy that I find him, he's going to be a kind of a leader, you know, and help guys prepare and, and show what work is needed to get things done. Um, I think he's going to be exciting. He's going to be a fan favorite for sure. Yeah, I mean, given the story behind him, that that alone is going to endear him to that entire city. But he's he's a mature kid. You hear this from everybody in his life that he just he didn't need much direction and what he needed to do in terms of work ethic and all the all the little things that it takes to become a pro. He already knew that he had to do all that. I, I talked to a, a veteran in the EIHL. Uh, who's probably like, I'm trying to think, he's like 17 years older than him, but still playing at the same time that Liam came up. And, and you know, Liam told me he really took him under his wing, but but the guy uh, told me, Jonathan Phillips told me, I really didn't have to because he, he already knew everything he was supposed to do. He'd be off on, on his own doing the work that he needed to do. So again, a very mature kid, a kid who understands what is is needed from him. So he probably will assume that role that you're talking about as a leader down in Tucson. And what advantage will he have being in Tucson this year as opposed to playing, you know, back in the UK? Well, I think it's what we talked about on, on yesterday's show too. It's, it's, it's building that core group in Tucson and it, it's, it's, they're going to learn to play the right way. And, and Andre Tourigny's way to start system wise, they're going to learn that. But this is a group they're going to want to keep together and mold together over the next, you know, two, three seasons. And I think Liam can be a part of that. Yeah, and you mentioned the Tampa example as a a great example. When you let 
all these guys play together, and, and hopefully they will do that. Hopefully they'll let them all develop together, and you can just bring them up. And he's uh, in that 2008, uh, 2018 draft class with yeah. Barrett Hayton and Ty Emerson. Like, there's guys that, that he is going to know down there, and so it's, it's going to be some friendship, camaraderie. There's, I think it's going to be a, a group of guys that come together rather quickly down there in Tucson. The other advantage I see with playing here is, it, you know, it's just another step. He's already tasted the OHL, so he's already proven to himself that he can succeed in in – major juniors in, you know, the in the best junior league in the world, probably the, the league that produces the most NHL draft picks every season. So the AHL is the next step. You hone your game, learn parts of the pro game that you probably didn't have to hone in the OHL, you know, structure, uh, away, uh, play away from the puck, those things that they always talk about, and, and, of course, bulking up. So he'll get a little time, and we'll see if he can develop in that level as well. Do you want to go to Dylan Gunther? Well, I was going to say, should we talk about Matthias Michelli since he may Staying be in Europe here. Staying in Europe, staying in Europe and staying in someone who's most likely going to so play no. in Tucson. Yeah. So you're <laughs> you, hit the other you? tab. <laughs> the other tab ready. But yeah, someone who, again, is probably most likely going to be playing in Tucson. Yeah, that is, that is the plan for Michelli. Bill Armstrong has already said that. Curious, really curious to see what he can do over here because I don't have much of a feel for his game. Another guy who's skilled, uh, they've they've talked to him. I, I know Mark Bell, their development coach, talked to him a lot about playing more inside. He tends to be on the perimeter too much. And, uh, you know, the, the European game is different. The ice service is different, although, you know, ice services depend on the country you go to. But he's got he's got to learn the North American game, the pro game. He does. He's a smaller stature forward that scores. I mean, he's got good hands. He can, he can make plays. But he finds his way to the net. Um, Coyote fans probably most liken him to a, a Connor Garland. Size and stature and skill level, not quite that grit and, and, and scrappy battle that we mm-hmm. saw out of Garland, but maybe that comes. Um, but I think just the skill level, size, how he plays, what to look for from him, I think fans will mostly, hey, yeah, he kind of kind of reminds me of Connor Garland. Um, I think he's another one. You talk about what they're trying to do down in Tucson with the, his skill level and how he approaches the game and his ability to score. I mean, he, he can put up the points. So I think that Tucson, I know we're a Coyote show, but we're going we're gonna to spend some time talking about Tucson this year yeah. because I think they're a team that's going to have success and they're going to be what gets at the end of the tunnel of the rebuild is these guys. So let's follow and see how they're doing. So I, I think he's another one that's going to be an exciting guy to watch next week because can he compete with the guys that we talked about, Zyrgis, Drysdale, Byron, right. those type of players, can he fit into that class? Side note, I just love European uniforms. In spite of all oh, the patches, yeah. like there's a little too much advertising on them for my taste. I don't I don't mind the advertising. It's a revenue stream, but, but I, I don't want to see patches no. all over. But there's so many great uniforms really in are. Europe. Really like are. uh uh, Ilvis, right? The, yeah. Their their mascot is unbelievable. There's so many good ones. And over that's there. the team he most recently played for. Yeah. So, his, yeah, he looks awesome. Should we stick on the Europe theme and head sure. over to Mo- Moser? You drive the bus, so yeah. Apparently, because when I throw out a suggestion, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna down, just do so that last, Moser. just just to, to spite you. <laughs> yeah. What um, do got? He's well thought of amongst the coaching staff. He's got a ways to go. Mm-hmm. He's probably the most raw of the people we've talked about right now. Um, there are some things in his game that they like, that they see that they can develop. And again, that's what the development camp's about. Um, he, he's got a ways to go. I mean, he, he's still he's a he's a big defenseman, left hand shot, but but he'll need some time to develop before he's ready to play. What are, what are the what are you hearing in terms of? The, the areas of development that he still needs to work on because I've heard the same thing. He's he's a bit of a project. They're 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 going to need to develop him a bit over here. Yeah, but there's so much with a defenseman that's yeah. different than a forward. A forward can go, hey, go work harder, skate harder, and get to the net. A defenseman, it, it, it's got to be a little more cerebral. You got different reads. You got to you got to be tough and gritty. It doesn't mean you need to be six foot four, two forty. You need to be like Oliver Ekman Larson wasn't a big defenseman, but he could win battles in the corner because he had technique. Tepo Newman and going way back and date myself. But another guy wasn't a large stature defenseman, but could play physical enough to come out of the corner with a puck. Those things take time to develop. I think his skating is strong and I think he's gonna be okay with the puck and making that first pass. I think it's learning the North American game. Different ice surface, you're in a smaller space, and it is tougher and grittier. I mean, you're gonna have to learn how to handle those one-on-one battles, protect the puck, how to to come out of the corner with the puck, or if you don't come out with the puck, 
How do you position your stick to defend the areas of the ice you need to defend? Um, so I think it's more of a learning curve, and you get that learning from reps and reps and reps. And again, I, I think one good thing that the Coyotes have, we've talked about the pieces of getting the draft picks. The next is develop, developing them. The staff in Tucson, that's what they do, and they've got a really good development staff. We talked about Mark Bell already. So they're focused on the job they have to do to make these guys available to play at higher levels. Right. That was wow! That was complete, wasn't it? That was beautiful. We got nothing to add, Petey. I'm here, isn't it? We just uh, Talk we just handed off to Petey. I love it. All Did right. I, can I get a beer? <laughs> oh man! All right, let's stick. Let's just stick Europe. Uh, Provolone. Provolnev, yeah. Provolnev? Yep. Is that Pro- how I say Pro- 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 Again, I'll jump in first. This is when <laughs> we ahead, talk PD. about yeah. the guys. Don't, don't let me stop you. Yeah. Don't worry go. about us. <laughs> so when we talk about this guy, this truly is the one player in this entire development camp that will be with this roster the longest. Yep. Will he be there on October 14th, 15th, opening night? I, You know what? I don't know, but he has the, the best opportunity. Why? Well, he's the oldest. He's a 26-year-old player. He's more mature physically, emotionally. He played in the KHL, which is a men's league. And and believe me, Coyote fans know Ilya Labushkin. Similar player. Yep. This is a big, strong, tough player. Maybe with a little bit of offense. Could still make that first pass, but he's a tough, tough player. And that's why he's here. That's what you're looking for out of him. And there is a spot on the back end for the Coyotes right now. I mean, there, you there's know, a couple you, spots. Yeah, so you can look at a 6-7. <laughs> yeah. Is this a guy that could be on the Coyotes opening night roster? I think the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, there's no guarantees. There's, you're going to have to go and play. He's going to have to prove to the coaching staff that he's ready and can play in this style of game. And even with, with Labushkin, it took him some time. Like, it's an adjustment. It's a different league. It's a different speed. It took him some time to, to really settle into his game. But this is kind of the blueprint that I see for for Provenov. It's the same same player. Yeah, and it, you mentioned the age. Uh, Mosier's actually a little older as well, so he has the maturity level on his side. But I do think there's longer to go there. But with Provenov, I, I really think he's going to make the final roster. He's going to be among the top seven defensemen on this team. Um, you mentioned the physical side too. This is we're, we're starting to see this, and he mentioned it last season. GM Bill, Bill Armstrong, he talked about getting tougher. He wanted this team to be more physical, more punishing. These are the type of players that you're probably going to see enter the organization a little more. He knew they were going to have to get creative this offseason to find some of these guys. So you go to the KHL and find a player like this. And he, he's, he's sort of exemplary of what they're trying to do with this team. Uh, build it in sort of the St. Louis Blues mold. Yeah. And it doesn't mean, and I don't think we're ever going to go back to the days where you see guys dropping the gloves all the time. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a guy that can finish in the corners, that can, can put somebody through the glass and just so they know they're there. And I think that that's an element that this Coyotes team has missed for, for a while now. Um, Labushkin brought that recently, but you need it now. And I still think, you know, I'm not a guy that, that loves the fighting in hockey. It's just not, I don't, I think there's a point for it. I think it has to be there. I don't think it'll ever go away. I think it's a tool to protect players. I don't like it as a show, as an extravaganza. I think it's there to protect the players on the ice. And I think that's their last line of defense. So we'll talk about that in another show. We're not talking about that with this player. We're talking about someone that can still be tough in front of the net, can win those stick battles around the net, Mm -hmm. and can come out of the puck in the corner. And so that element you still need to have in this league. And I think he's a player that can provide that. All right. Well, we can... We can go back to Dylan Gunther. Okay. I feel ready. Now I can talk about the I kid. I feel ready for him. Um, he really wants I to think, talk about Dylan Gunther. Well, I know. I was, he's excited. Okay. He's first know, round have, draft pick. Still got his feet on the table. He's but, living at Shane Dolan's house. He's like, we yeah, recorded that. Yeah, it's a cool story. Well, I mean. And also what I think is interesting about him is the morning of the draft, he was not even a possibility for the Coyotes. He didn't even have a pick in the first round. And not yeah. only that, he was projected top five and – yeah, Corey Brahman had number three on his prospect yeah, list. Yeah, so he it's... fell to the Coyotes at number nine, so he's an exciting prospect. He's really well liked too. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, this kid can play. Like, I, we talk about development and what's best for the future of the organization, and letting guys bake and letting guys develop and learn. Let's hope they follow that plan with this player. Uh, I think Gunther needs to. to let him go back to junior. Let him succeed. Yeah, I don't see another option for him. No, let somebody. him succeed. Let him put up points. And and you've got to look at this draft class specifically. They haven't played. 
Like they, they haven't had a full season yeah. in a year and a half. So I think this is an opportunity for him to develop those skills that are going to allow him to be a better player. He's going to play all the big minutes. He's going to play power play. He's going to get a lot of ice time. He'll be, you know, first minute, last minute kind of guy of a period. Um, he's got some high-end skill. He can shoot the puck. Yes. I've heard his – they call him the gunner for a reason. Exactly. Like he's got a world-class shot. NHL can, caliber already. He can beat goalies clean yeah. from the top of the circle, and that's a rarity. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a guy that you can look to the future when you get through the tunnel that he is going to be there and he'll still be standing. So he's a guy to watch next week in the tournament. Um, he's a guy to keep an eye on next season when you're Googling stats. Look him up because I think he's a guy that will be a part of the Coyotes' future. I wanted to ask you a couple questions on this. I've talked to a lot of people in this past about that shot in particular. When, when you look at the Coyotes' history, and we've talked a lot about their lack of a franchise center, but... They haven't had a lot of great goal scorers either. Keith Kachuk is probably the last great goal scorer they had on this roster. In terms of pure shooters, who are the best Coyotes that you can remember? It's funny. and, and There's one there right now. And Phil Kessel, Phil Kessel. I was going to say Phil Kessel. Like he, he, is, he became the player he is today because he can shoot the puck. And it's, it's a rarity to be able to beat a goalie clean. Alex Ovechkin can shoot the puck from that top of the circle. He can beat somebody clean. That's difficult to do. One to look for now, again, in the current roster, Jacob Chikrin. Hmm. You know, the chickaboom from the back end on the yeah. power play. Like, he can fire that puck. Like, look at some of the goals he scored last year. Um, there are finesse shooters like a, like a Clayton Keller, but pure, hard, booming shots. It's just such a rarity. I, I, I have to go back. Like, even Kachuk, like, great shot. But Keith Kachuk scored a lot of goals closer than you and I are right yeah, now. Yeah. Like, he was a beast in front of the net and and that's how he scored his goals he was a you know he's a bull in a china shop um good shot i'm trying to think who who are the great shots and i know the guys that, that back at the locker room right now stan wilson and those guys are going oh this guy this guy this guy and i'm i'm not you're blanking there you're blanking. gonna hear from all of them right after yeah, this. No, they're gonna text how was, me how would you uh rate verbi shot ready for bada shot he's a goal scorer but, See, but he's he just a, those the kind right of spots? shots those goal scores that scored like that and all of reckman larson goes in that category too it's they scored and look at some of those sneaky shots they had it's their release as opposed to the the weight of the shot when mm -hmm. we talk about how heavy a shot is or how hard a shot is redeem verbata has that touch so it it's deceiving how it's coming off the stick goalies have a hard time reading those kind of players those mm. little those little subtle moves of yeah. the wrist to release the puck change the angle of the yeah, and, yeah and yeah, those yeah. even a Sidney crosby they're not overpowering the goalie it's just how they change the angle of the puck how they use those little moves of the toe and the you know toe drag and and little changes in the blade and verbata was one of those type of players just the skill to be able to get the puck off of his stick in unique ways that made it difficult for goalies to read. And for the most recent history, I go to Oliver's power play goals, watch him take those wrist shots yeah. from the point. There's no slap shots. It's just that finesse, quick wrister where you're not ready for it or changes the angle just enough where the goalie needs to move. Those shots are dangerous. Yeah, and wrist shots are more accurate too. You can for place sure. them. So. You don't have time anymore. In, yeah. in, in this game, the players are so fast and defend so well, stick on puck and stick out in front of you. You don't have time to take those booming slap shots anymore, except on the power play. And that's why we talked about Chikrin and the yeah. one-timer. You don't have time. you got to get that puck off, quick release. Uh, Clayton Keller can do that. He's really sneaky and tight. He's got that quick little wrist shot from the top of the circle. If you want to be successful today, you've got to get it off your stick quick because there's going to be somebody in your face defending you and you're going to have a stick on a puck and it's gone. My question about um, Dylan Gunther is, you know, both of you obviously agree that he will not be on the Coyotes roster this season. There's really no reason for him to be. But what would you say would be a timeline for us to see him in a Coyotes jersey in the regular season in the coming years? I mean, he's he's only he, he's got two years of junior. junior yeah, yeah. So because he can't play in the AHL because of that. Yeah. We can. <laughs> Speaking of an entire show we could do on the uh, <laughs> yeah. CHL NHL agreement, which I hate, I think it's a disservice to the players. But he can't play in the A for two seasons, so I would imagine he'll be back with the Old Kings for two seasons. Uh, I guess because he's such a high draft pick, and and some people thought of him even more highly. There's a chance he could be with the team next season, but for his development, I'm, they're going to have to really look at that and decide what's best. And, and listen, I 
I mean, I wouldn't even be surprised if he spent two years in juniors and a year down in Tucson to develop. Uh, I don't know if that's going to happen for that high of a draft pick, but it wouldn't surprise me if they feel that's the right development path. Yeah, and I think the key to what you said, Craig, is the right development path. Yeah. If he goes back to the Oil Kings next year and he checks all the boxes, leads the league in scoring, MVP of the Western League, win a championship, you know, maybe that plan changes. I I, I hate to set a kid's path now for right. one, two, three years in the future because you just don't know. You know when they get here. And honestly, sometimes a kid goes through camp and even into the start of the season, they can play, you know, is it 10 games now before you have to send them down? Back to their junior club. There's kids that get that long of a look. They play games in the National League, and you go, he's that close, but let's get him back down to his junior team. Let's let him go to the World Junior Championships, Mm -hmm. get that experience. And sometimes being the big fish in a smaller pond or a smaller setting really helps develop these guys to play here. Confidence, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. for sure. And we've seen it many teams, many players, that they try to do it too quickly. But there are players. I mean, there's Connor McDavid's out there that we're talking ready. about the poster franchise for for Russian guys. Yeah, it's in hard. Development. You know, <laughs> so when, many of them. But sometimes when you go back in the history of Russian players with this organization, you hate to say they have to, but they had to. They had holes to fill. They had players that needed to play that were better than the players down below. And I know it. It, it at hurts the your time. Future. It hurt. It, it does. It hurts. Hurts the future of the franchise. But at that time, in that short time frame. You go, gosh, this kid can play here. Yeah, and I know it's it's hard. Coaches have a hard time looking next year or two years. That's not their job. Their job is look to tomorrow night. What gives me the best team to tomorrow night? And if this kid can help me win tomorrow, yeah. ah, it's hard to keep him out of my lineup. One more question for you on on Gunther before we move on to. I think we have one more. It's Josh Doan, right? Or if we're even yeah. going into him, but um, Brad Lauer, his coach up at the, with the Oil Kings, told me he, he might put him at center this year because of their situation on roster. Do you think that could hurt him in any way when that's not where he pans out in the no, NHL? Or could it actually fact, help him? It's a, it's, it's a, it's a benefit. And, and okay. for, for this organization, we've talked about it year after year after year, getting a franchise centerman. They take centermen and put them to the wing all the time. Yeah, There's rosters that have nine centermen on it throughout this league. They just play on the wing. Um yeah, get reps at the center ice. It's a different position, and I know there are, there are fans that go, "There's not much difference other than the dropping in the puck." <laughs> the responsibilities of yeah. a center iceman versus a winger in the defensive zone and the offensive zone are so vastly different. Yep. Um, that yeah, I, I think getting reps reps in the middle of the ice for him is a huge advantage for this organization. Uh, having that versatility of a player that can play both is huge. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the center versus wing thing. I I have this argument with people about the Selkie Trophy because they, they get angry that wings don't, some of the wings, the really good defensive wings don't get more attention. But to me, the center iceman's responsibilities down low in the defensive zone, there's just there's so much more to the position that I'm going really to right? give the nod to the center in those situations. We won't, yeah. There are some teams that have high, high-end wingers that their defensive zone responsibilities right. are very minimal. Yeah. You stand there, and <laughs> that's it. Centerman, watch and, and watch the. I know we're, we're weeks away from the season starting, but watch a centerman. Watch his path in the defensive zone, how much area he needs to cover, yeah. and what his responsibilities are. And when that puck turns over, he's the guy that's responsible for getting that quick, short pass and going the other way. So they've got a lot to do. So I think for in this per, particular instance, if he can get reps playing center, learn that position, it, it only benefits this organization in the long term. All right, well, we mentioned that um, Dylan Gunther was living with Shane Doan. So last but not least, we have Josh Doan, son yeah. of Shane. Um, son of Shane. Who? Son of Shane. Oh. <laughs> yeah, what do, what do we have on Josh Doan? I just, I, I think it's great that Coyotes fans are going to get to watch him develop here in the Valley. He's going to be playing at ASU, so it's, it's a really cool situation. Listen, Josh has been, and you mentioned this the other day, He's been a late bloomer for most of his career because he hit a late growth spurt. So he had to learn to play as a small player, more of a cerebral player. I think that benefits him more now as he's growing into this bigger body. He might be able to play both styles. He's not his dad. He's not going to be that bull in the china shop. But he's a he's a skilled player who is now getting a really big body. So he's a really intriguing prospect. And again, he's been a late bloomer. So I know there was some question at the draft. There were some people thought that the Coyotes wasted too high of a pick on on Josh Doan. 
the, this was not a courtesy pick. They did not pick him because he's Shane Doan's son. They did a lot of scouting on him, and they really like his potential still, his upside. And I see why, because again, he's he's we're still seeing him develop. He's not where he's going to be. Yeah, and I, I look at Josh Doan, and, I, and a couple of things I think about. I can't imagine growing up and having Doan on the back of your jersey, and that's your dad. Like, <laughs> and then getting drafted here. That's a hard, hard, <laughs> yeah. hard player to follow. And, and you, you, not just talking about on the ice, but so as Josh is growing up, he was small in stature. He was one of the smaller kids. And I remember sitting with Shane, watching his son play at the ice then when we were practicing there. And you're like, that's your son? Like, really? <laughs> Are you sure? Because he just, you, you see, you think Shane Dolan's son is going to be this big guy bruising around the ice. And Josh isn't that, wasn't that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think for Josh's development, it, it probably was a good thing. Because now the comparisons with you're not your dad anymore, that stops at a very early age. You're not your dad. Yeah. You're a different player. And it also allowed him to grow and develop differently. I can't play like my dad. I'm not that style, so I have to become my own person and my own player. And that's where we talk about the cerebral, the smart. Where do I have to get to? So one, I don't want to get hit. Like I want to get the puck in the right area, but I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to get hit. So what do I need to do? I need to be faster. I need to be quicker. I need to have better hands. I need to be smarter than the guy I'm playing against. So I think for his development, that was huge. So he's got that separation now. And then he goes in, you know, he goes into the USHL. And his first season, he didn't produce. He didn't play a lot, yeah. didn't play a big role. By design, too, if you talk to for Ryan sure. Hardy, their GM, who just left for the Leafs. And he played yeah. a good team in Chicago. That was a good hockey team. Yeah, I think, it's the best, I think it's the best program in the USHL, but go ahead. And he, he took that year to learn, became a little bit different player, got a little bit bigger. I mean, he's still, he's still a kid. And so now you get to a camp like this, and you go, oh, okay, like, this kid can play. This is, as you said, this is by no means a PR move. There's, this organization is not going to pick someone in the draft that high just to be nice to sung, Shane yeah, Doan. Yeah, um, so the kid can yeah. play. And I think what's, what's great for the fans here in the Valley is he's here. Yeah. He, we get to go see him down the street at ASU, uh, watch his development, watch what kind of player he is, and see him grow. And I, I, I'm so happy for Shane mm. because – People that know Shane, and it's cliche in sports, and people talk about, oh, what a great person. Shane Doan is that person. Yeah. He is everything you've heard about from every interview and article. That is Shane Doan. Family's incredibly important to him. And to have his son here where he can watch him play on a frequent basis and be a part of his life and development, I am so happy for Shane that he gets to see that. And then when he goes to the next level, that he's still here. Yeah. Uh, that's just, it's, you couldn't write a better movie. And then you get to know Josh and you realize he's, he's every bit as likable yeah. as his dad. He's just, yeah. yeah, he's just an incredible kid. You, you, you can see the family in him so much. And you, I mean, you obviously know the entire family, but a great family. And he's, he's just such a down to earth kid. So easy to like. And he's that, he's that team builder that his dad right. was too in the locker room. He's, He's making friends with everyone, and it's it's not a facade. There's nothing fake about it. He's the genuine article, just like his dad. And that's what we talk about when we're talking about building this team and building this franchise. One of the things you've heard throughout this entire segment of, of players is he's a good guy. He's a good guy. And, hey, you don't need to be a good guy to win a championship. There are plenty of teams that fight in the locker room before they go play on the ice. That is 100% a true story. But it is helpful when they get along and they're good people and they're good soldiers. Yeah. You develop that character and that the ability for guys to, to gel and get along, that can go a long way. And I think that these type of players, they've got the right mix of character right now. Now can they get the right mix of hockey to go along with that? And I think we're going to see that with the Tucson Roadrunners over the next two, three years. And does that develop and translate to the Coyotes? Let's hope so. Yeah. Well, we have the rest of development camp this weekend, rookie camp next week, which we mentioned we will be diving into later next week. Um, but some other stuff coming up this weekend is NFL football. And I oh, believe boy, here we go. Craig has Setting some, me up. <laughs> some <laughs> thoughts on his DraftKings pick of the week. My pick of the week is the Rams over the Bears. And this will shock no one who's listening to this. Uh, 
I, how many times do you think Andy Dalton will be on his back in this game, starting for the Bears? <sighs> to me, this is this is the Justin Fields watch. How long before Justin Fields is at quarterback for the yeah. Bears? My, when you look at the schedule, they they have two tough games in their first three. I think Dalton starts the first three games, and by week four, Justin Fields is going to be the Bears quarterback. But it's going to be a rough start for the Bears, especially having to go up against that defensive front in, in L.A. against the Rams. Yeah. Do you know the line by any chance? No. Shane? Uh, yeah, yeah the, uh, the Bears plus eight, so the, the Rams are favored by eight points. Okay. Right. I, I, you, 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 so okay. you're taking the money line, taking the money line, the Rams. Yeah, I would. Shane, do yeah. you agree? Do you agree Shane? with that? I, why would I ever bet on the Bears? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you wanted to bet on the Can we Bears, isolate that quote. Yeah. <laughs> why would I ever bet on the Bears? <laughs> if you ever want to bet on the Bears or the Rams. If- you know, whatever you can do so on the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Um, and if you use the promo code PHNX, like I mentioned earlier in the show, you receive $200 in free bets um, just to place a $1 bet on any week one game. So that could be your week one game that you pe- bet a dollar on is the, uh, the Bears game this weekend. That's promo code PHNX, free $200 in bets instantly um, at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And like I said before, 21 and over, Arizona only gambling problem call 1-800 next step eligibility restrictions apply maximum $50 wager one per customer see draftkings.com slash sportsbook for details and so we have Shane as our producer who does the bet show yep so that's a good thing for us because I I'm learning I'm still learning not a sports gaming guy yet so Shane we got his your take on his bet I'm a Vikings guy I think they're minus three with Cincinnati thoughts <laughs> Well, first of all, I'm sorry. Right now, uh, that's not a good time. But i that's one of my games that I would just stay the hell away from. Oh. Like, just don't touch okay. that. You know, Jamar Chase the other day for the Bengals said that he wishes there were white lines on the football like in college because he can't see it. Oh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I don't really yeah. know what's going to oh. happen in that one. <sighs> See Shane, thanks. You should. I wish you would have got me before the show, but it might, be, it might be too late. Uh, well, we can we can have you get with him later and okay. go over some bets for the weekend. Sorry, back to hockey. That's fine. Um, so we have just a few minutes left. Um, so if you are a member of PHNX, you get access to the members only Discord. Like I mentioned earlier, it has been popping off. All sorts of messages this morning. Little bit of Discord on a it, by bit the of way. Discord. So just a shout out. Please, please behave. Please yes. be nice to each other on that site. Yes, please. Um, and this morning we asked um, for some listener questions, which we'll get to as many as we can. We can roll them over into next week too. I know a lot of people have been wondering my hot takes on things such as ketchup and hot dogs, but we will save that for next week. PD has plans. Yeah, Yeah. PD has plans. Well, no, I had to go through that with my (laughs) inaugural Natty Hattie show, so it's only fair we take some time. We're going to do it. Let's do it right. Really prepare. Prepare a graphic, all sorts of background info so that we can carve Leah for a show. And we want to do that when we have time for me to get roasted by you both. are Are they minions? Did we call them? Is that... Like, what are Somebody did say that on Somebody Twitter, called, but uh, and I don't know if that's appropriate. But I'm well, careful. Well, now the are the new thing is Craig in the gospel, and I know. it's going to be Minister Morgan. Minister Morgan or Morgan's and, minions. Gee, I really can go with either of these. I don't know. The, the T-shirt is coming, so stay tuned for that one. That that's going to be the second highest shirt after the Coyotes. <laughs> one. So be very careful, Leah, on offending. I'm going to stay Craig. true to myself on my takes. That's but, right. Yeah. Be I'm very offended. careful. That's right, PD. You I'm should know. Very careful. Tread lightly. Anyway, these are the sorts of things happening in the uh, members only Discord. Um, we might just have time for one question. So this one is from Stephen V. What would you ideally like to see from an organizational side to help create deep roots within the diverse communities scattered across the valley? I think some of what we're already seeing, I, I, I spoke to Javier Gutierrez at, at length about this before the president and CEO of the Coyotes. They're reaching out to the Latino community and that's so important. I, I feel like in the past, There have been some efforts. Aaron Cohen, the previous president, did some good things in that community as well. But they can do so much more. Clearly, that's not a big part of the the fan base right now. They they tend to gravitate toward other sports. Uh, Hockey's not really embedded in the Latino community. So how do you go about changing that? Well, you bring them into the family, first of all. You market to them. But more so than that, to me, when you're talking about grassroots efforts, you need to build rinks in the neighborhoods where they live and introduce hockey. That's the way you do it. 
Sometimes, you know, there, there are cost issues for, for many people with hockey. It's an expensive sport. So find a way to help people out with that as well, with whether it's rental equipment or supplementing or donating. But you need to get into those communities, build the rinks, and get them playing hockey. That's the way to start. Yeah, it's always been about the grassroots programs here with the Coyotes. And they've Not tried. enough rinks, though. They've tried, and they've tried. And they've done street hockey programs. You've done boys and girls club programs. And Craig hits it on the head. It's about playing on the ice. And it's so difficult here because there just isn't enough ice to skate on. And no. the ice that is here in the valley is utilized from 5 in the morning until midnight, and it's full, and they could fill four more sheets tomorrow if they had the ice. And so I think that focus will have to keep continue to grow. Um, there needs to be more places to play. And that's yeah. uh, that's an expensive endeavor to build a building. Even USA if- Hockey did a, a, a deep dive. I, I did this story as well. Per capita, for the players that we have, we have the fewest ice arenas available for, for players in Arizona, in the state of Arizona. You go down to Tucson, there's not a permanent ice yeah. sheet in Tucson, yeah. in spite of the fact that the AHL team plays down there. Yeah. It's crazy. We need more arenas. You know, they've talked about it in Tucson for a long time. You've got U of A, has got club hockey there. There's so many people down there wanting to play yeah. adult leads, they drive kid up here. leads, and they can't play. Yeah. We might have one coming up by Keenan. We'll see if that gets yeah, through. Yeah, and, and you know, there, yeah. there's there's rumors and thoughts of other buildings going up in the city as well, but that's really, that's the core of this, is yeah. there needs to be more places to play, and then figure out the programs for those kids starting and learning how to play hockey. But you got to have more ice first. Do you have time to read that comment before I, we go? I'm going to read the comment you got to read the comment before we go. Um, thank you to everyone who asked questions. Um, we will answer more of them in our shows next week. But there was one comment that made all three of us <laughs> laugh out loud. I just have to read it. Um, the least the Yotes could do is start selling that throwback ale in all grocery stores across the valley. If I have to sit in my living room watching my hope die on a TV while a pandemic <laughs> rages all around me, I shouldn't have to do so sober. <laughs> and I just wow. think... I don't even know what to say. I just hope your hope doesn't die. He has five of those. I will say this. He had six, but he drank one. I did at one point drink. I I thought I had a six pack of the throwback ale. I have five cans left. We will have them in the studio, maybe opening night or round opening. For some momentous occasion, we will. Crack into toast those. and crack into the throwback <laughs> ales. I love it. All right. Well, maybe that the members uh, Discord can come up with what that momentous <laughs> occasion will be. Um, yeah. If you want to become a member, you can um, do so on gophnx.com. Like I said before, free T-shirt with a year sign up. Amazing, amazing content on the website. Written stuff. We'll have videos mm-hmm. um, and more, not just from us, but from all the other sports. And if you're watching this on YouTube right now, be sure to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell to get notifications when every show goes live. Um, and just support everything that's going on here. It's day two of PHNX and day two of the PHNX Coyote Show. And we will be <sighs> back with more on Monday, Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday next week. Beautiful. It's the weekend. It's the weekend. Thanks so much, and have a good weekend, everyone.